Hey everybody, it's Greg Vector here, and in this video, I'm going to do a quick review of the Sigma 14 to 24 millimeter f 2.8 art lens. Now I took this lens with me to Iceland so we're going to look at some raw images that I shot in Iceland with this lens. And also stick around to the end I'll give you my thoughts on what I thought of this lens. Alright so let's get started. So let's talk about first a few things that you probably look for in a lens. Now one would be the sharpness of the lens. Two consistent focus whether it focuses consistently. Sometimes third-party lenses maybe don't work that well with certain brands Canon or Nikon so I'll let you know what I thought about that. Also color rendition. How do the colors look? Does it look sharp? Does it look colorful? And if you're paying less for a third-party lens, does it look as good or better than say a Nikon or a Canon lens? We're going to discuss those in this video as well as looking at some raw images I shot with this lens. Now I want to say that I was really impressed with the sharpness of this lens. It was about $600 less than the Nikon version and I really thought it was amazingly sharp. Now as well as chromatic aberration, I hardly saw any of that. I didn't really notice any problems with that. Now color rendition, I was really impressed with the color rendition and the focus. Some people say that Sigma lenses don't focus consistently. I found that this focused perfectly all of the time. Sometimes even better than some of my Nikon lenses focus. So as far as sharpness, focus, color rendition, chromatic aberration, I thought it was great. Let's go to the computer, let's check out some images, and then I'm going to talk about one drawback of this lens, potentially for some people, so stick around for that part as well. Alright, so here we are looking at an image shot on the Sigma 14-24 f 2.8. Now this is a raw image, we're in Capture 1, and you can see down here at the bottom, I shot this at ISO 64, shutter speed 125, Aperture f8 at 16 millimeters. So you can go all the way to 14 or to 24 depending on your situation. And I found the really wide angle worked great in this situation. I think I took a few at 14 as well at the same scene. Here's another one. This one was shot at 16, but you can see I took a number of images. This is a Vesterhorn in Iceland. This one here was shot at 14. So I just kind of moved around and I was going around 14 to 16 millimeter trying to just capture the whole mountain range. But you could see just from the depth of color, the sharpness at f8, I'm pretty happy with it. If you can see the green grass here, you can see the black sand, you can see the blue skies, and this isn't an HDR image. It was able to capture all of this on the Nikon D850. Now this lens that I'm talking about specifically for this video is the Sigma 14-24 f2.8 Nikon F mount, but I imagine it behaves pretty similarly across different cameras like the Canon or the Sony. So let's look at a couple of different images too, just so you can get an idea. So this was shot at the Glacier Lagoon as well, and you can see the blues are very rich, the whites. Now I shot this on just automatic white balance, and I shot in manual mode with the camera, but you can see that the image sharpness is definitely there, the color rendition is there, and if you look corner to corner, you can see that it's as, as sharp on the edges as it is in the center. And I'm pretty happy with the color rendition and the images coming out of this lens, they just look fantastic. You see here I captured a rainbow. It's just a really good lens in my opinion. So let's talk about focus. So the focus, I've heard some bad stories about Sigma lenses, how the focus isn't accurate, you'll miss focus 50% of the time. I didn't find that to be the case. I found that this lens focused really quickly and really accurately, and I don't think I have very many blurry images. On the other hand, with my Nikon 105mm lens, I miss focus on that all the time. So I found the focus to be better than some of my Nikon lenses. For a third-party lens, I found the focus to be very good. Now as far as sharpness, it's definitely as sharp as the sharpest lenses I've ever owned. And as far as the color rendition, I think it can really bring out rich colors. Let's look at uh, the Blue Lagoon here. You can see here we've got different shades of blue. We have white, we have the blue sky, we have the colors of the rock, we have the green. It really brings out the colors. Now this was shot at 24 millimeters, and I'm just really impressed with what this lens can do as far as the sharpness, as far as the focusing ability, as far as the color rendition, and I didn't really see any chromatic aberration. Now also here's another shot here, and you can see those are just some of the blown out highlights. I didn't really capture the whole dynamic range of that scene, but if I click that, that'll turn off and you can kind of see how it looks. And really it does a great job. Now as far as build quality, I found the build quality very solid. It seems like a very solid lens. Now let's talk about one of the drawbacks 
about this lens. Now it's a rounded lens, so you can't screw on a filter like you normally would. So if you wanted to put an ND filter to do a long exposure and blur the water or blur a waterfall, you're going to need a third party mount adapter for that. That's something to consider. And at the time of this recording, when I was heading to Iceland, there was only one company that made one and they couldn't get it to me in time. I think Lee Filters is working on an adapter right now. So by the time you watch this video, there may be a couple of different adapters on the market available to you. But that's one thing to consider is if you have thread mounted adapters for ND filters or a polarizing filter, you'll probably have to invest in a third party mounting system. And at the time of this recording, there was only one available. I think there'll be two or three on the market by the time you see this video. So that's just another added expense. So if that's a concern, you may want to look at a 16 to 35 millimeter that allows filter threads to go on. That may be something that you consider or it may matter to you, or maybe it doesn't. But overall, I found the image quality to be really good. The color rendition, the focusing, the sharpness, I'm pretty impressed with this considering that it costs less than the Nikon equivalent lens. All right, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up for this video. And if you have any comments or questions, you can post them down below. Now, if you're not already a subscriber, I come out with new photography videos every week. Just click on that subscribe button and then hit that bell notification and you'll be notified of all of my future video updates. All right, thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. All right, I'll see you in the next video.